The president of the United States there, Joe Biden, in England, in East Anglia at Mildenhall uh, Royal Air Force there addressing uh, American service members and their families, but also sounding the main themes of this his first uh, major or a trip overseas. The president saying that uh, our alliances around the world are based on democratic values and saying that uh, it is time to work harder than ever to demonstrate uh, that the dem that democracy can work. Those are the stakes he is laying out on this trip. Uh, it follows four tumultuous years of Donald Trump's presidency in which uh, Trump became the first American president to question uh, NATO, not just the funding of NATO. President Trump was the first uh, American president since NATO's founding uh, to question uh, Article 5, the Mutual Defense Pact. If one is attacked, all is attacked. He was asked point blank about that and he would not endorse it. And I want to go to Maggie Rooley now. Now, given this serious policy part of, of the president's speech, really the themes of this trip, and ask, is it possible, as Joe Biden is trying to do here, is it possible to unring the Trump bell when it comes to the American commitment and the trust in the United States commitment to come to the aid and defense of its allies? Well, Terry, I think that's exactly what many of our allies are hoping right now. With so many people here in Europe and in the U.K., the leaders here are looking towards President Biden as that change. I mean, there were a lot of fractured relationships between America and European leaders. You know, it's hard to ignore if you think back uh, to the last G7 summit with President Trump. And he had altercations with leaders from Germany, with leaders from Canada. There are some almost famous memes now, photos that show him uh, with those countries' leaders. And now they're looking towards the future, towards uh, President Biden. And, and what he's going to bring. And those themes that you mentioned, we heard him talk about unity. Uh, he brought up the fact that America needs our allies around the world. That rhetoric is very different from what we heard just a few years ago. So, uh, so many allies are looking towards this, but they also want to see it in action. You know, uh, they don't know how long President Biden's going to be in power for it. They don't know uh, what's going to come next. So if they want to see a commitment to NATO and to other allies, they need to see it soon and they want to expect it to last. And Rachel, I know you're traveling with the president through throughout this trip. While talking about the importance of our alliances, he also talked about the need to modernize those alliances. How's the president going to be trying to do that throughout the next week? Yeah, well, he's going to start with tomorrow with unveiling this uh, vaccine global distribution right here on the world stage on his first foreign trip. I, I think this was a very clear departure from what we have seen over the last four years. This is President Biden's first foreign trip, but in a lot of ways, he has been preparing for this for decades. As senator uh, for the foreign policy, he took many trips abroad uh, during uh, his uh, vice presidency uh, to President Barack Obama. He was also uh, had a, a foreign policy policy focus as well. And so now it is his turn to lay that out. And what we heard today was not this America first policy that former President Donald Trump was pushing. It was this idea that we all have to do this together. We have to work with our allies in order to better the world, in order to promote democracy. So that is going to be front and center in a lot of his discussions going forward. He wants to push forward and hammer home this theme that America is back. He did talk, Richard, you're right, about coordinated multilateral action uh, to solve climate change and uh, to get out of the pandemic. Uh, those, those words, coordinated multilateral action, were almost bad words, dirty words in the Trump White House. But I want to go back to uh, uh, Maggie on something else he said. He warned President Putin, looking ahead to that summit, I suppose we call it in Cold War terms, he said, I've been clear the United States will respond in a robust and meaningful way when the Russian government engages in harmful activities. Uh, that is meant to be a shot across the bow. Do, do you think that's the kind of language Europeans are, are waiting to hear? And can he back it up? Yeah, I think it's complicated, Terry. Less, this is what Europeans are, are waiting to hear right now. They want someone who's going to stand up to Vladimir Putin, especially over the past few weeks of him cracking down on opposition. But, you know, he also said uh, he wants a stable and predictable relationship with Russia, it's something that we have right now, something he wants to keep. So there's that delicate balance. And, Terry, it is really under threat. You know, just moments ago, uh, we just heard, uh, came down that a Moscow court has decided that all op uh, op uh, people that support opposition leaders 
father, Alexei Navalny, who remember is jailed right now uh, in Russia, are now labeled extreme terrorists. Uh, now this puts them in the same level as someone uh, like ISIS. So right now we have another example of President Vladimir Putin cracking down on opposition leaders, uh, cracking down on media in his country. I mean, Terry, this goes so far that if you're someone who supports Navalny, again, the opposition leader to Vladimir Putin, uh, even if you just support him on social media, you can be thrown in jail. Uh, so this is what's happening right now today in Russia. Again, just a few days before that meeting, many are seeing this as a clear signal uh, to President Biden uh, that Vladimir Putin is going to play a tough game. He's not afraid of him. So uh, this is just adding fuel to this fire. You know, we've already mentioned what a high stakes summit this is. And now with this court ruling, something that the Kremlin most likely backed uh, it is now higher stakes than ever, Terry. Wow. And, and Rachel, Biden kept it pretty vague in terms of what exactly he is going to talk to Vladimir Putin about in that speech today. But he did allude to it a little bit, saying when it comes to Putin, he's going to let him know what I want him to know. And, and behind the scenes, I know we're hearing a little bit more about that. So what is it that Joe Biden wants Vladimir Putin to know? Yeah, well, listen, this is going to be a very direct conversation, and President Biden is not one for mincing words. He said it today that this is not their first time meeting. If you remember back in 2011 when they came face to face when he was the vice president, he told him flat out that he had no soul. Uh, so you can expect this to be a little bit of a tense meeting. The president also saying today that the United States will respond and must respond in a robust and meaningful way if Russia decides to act against the United States interest. This is going to be a high stakes meeting, as Maggie said, but the expectations of this may be somewhat low. For the past four decades, you have had this president, President Biden, in multiple roles in our United States government, watching as presidents have really struggled uh, with the challenging relationship with, with President Putin, trying to chart a pathway forward. He wants us to be predictable, but we know that that for, for certain he will be bringing up the cyber attacks. We know uh, that a White House official said on the way over here, on the president's way over here, that that 100 percent will be on the table. But this also comes at a time when you have Americans that are detained under President Putin. You have two former Marines as well. We're also told that he plans to bring that up. So I think you can expect this to be a very direct conversation with President Putin. The president was very keen on having this to be a face-to-face -face discussion after the two have had two phone calls over the last few weeks. And Maggie, I want to go back to that line that, that, that struck me, because it's so familiar part of Bidenism, if there is such a thing. The president saying democracy will and must prevail. We must demonstrate that democracy can still deliver for our people in this changed world. I, that's really the Biden bet uh, domestically to uh, push back on illiberal and nationalist uh, movements in this country, to give the, the practical change in people's lives that they can appreciate and calm people down. Uh, you know, I was your predecessor over there in London and covered Brexit, covered nationalist leaders around Europe, was in Russia and Turkey and other nationalist uh, and illiberal countries. Uh, I wonder if, if that's, if it feels that force is so powerful in Britain and elsewhere. You know, what can, is the president right that, that, that he can, that people can push that back with practical change for the better? Well, it's interesting you bring that up, Terry, because a lot of the issues that America has been dealing with this past year, you, you mentioned uh, extremism in America. We're also dealing with it here in Europe and the UK. It, it, there are so many parallels. So uh, President Biden uh, stepping up there today, uh, using some of these these old words that have meant so much to America of, of democracy. And uh, you hear him bring up uh, all the things that are important to his family. He was so relatable, so personal, sharing all those personal stories. He really was this president that we're kind of used to, the solid leader that's promising democracy, that's promising a stable a leader in America that they can then partner with over here in Europe. And I think people are hoping that's what Europe wants right now. You know, these are uh, times with a lot of turmoil. Uh, we mentioned America is divided, but clearly the UK and Europe are divided as well. And so many people are hoping this type of stability will bring, will bring people back together. But, you know, Terry, unfortunately, it's still too early to tell. I think that that's what Biden wants. It's what many European leaders want, but it's going to be a rocky road. I think you're exactly right. And think of what that means. It's too early to tell if this effort to preserve democratic alliances, maybe even democracy itself, can work. Rachel Scott and Maggie Rooley, thanks so much for being there for us. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.